Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. This video I have finally finished the crow sculpture that I started a couple of videos ago. I started it with the skull and now I've finished the whole bird and actually finished the whole sculpture. Um, so here he is in um, all his glory. This one is called Covid-19. You see what I did there? I've given him a bronze finish and that is the finished sculpture. I'm going to be doing this in a few videos because I've got well over 30 hours of um, footage that I need to go through and edit and get everything sorted for it to show to you. So it's going to be in probably two more, maybe three videos. This video is showing you the armature the covering of the armature and the sculpting of the head. Then the next one will be um, adding all the feathers and the details for you and possibly the painting. If not, the painting will then be in a video after that. So we're going to see how it goes with that. But if you like all things arty and you're a beginner and you'd like a few hints and tips, I would strongly recommend you subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new content. Without further ado, let's get on with the sculpting. Okay, so I've done the armature roughly. This is like the third time, so that's why I've not shown you me making it. But I've basically got a thick wire that I've drilled into the skull going up in a sort of like upside inverted U shape the width that I wanted the bird to be I've also got a wire running through the middle of that that's twisted as you can see up the top here that's going through the body in the middle to the tail and one end of that is sort of like open up so it's um, like a triangle at the bottom coming through tapering through to that and then I filled everything in between with foil and to hold everything in place because it's such a weird shape I've got masking tape so now I'm going to carry on and cover the rest of the bird. I've left this wire out here because I'm going to try and attach a head to that bit there. So that's where I'm at at the moment and I know he's not got any feet but he will do when I've finished but my theory is that I can sculpt the feet onto the skull rather than doing them separate for a bird. So yeah, so that's where we're at. For the body of my crow I'm using Super Sculpey Medium and I'm just smoothing that over the armature I've run it through my pasta maker to give me nice smooth sheets. You can also do that with a rolling pin. And then I'm going through and any divots caused by the foil, I'm just filling them in with small lumps of the clay. I'm just making sure I smooth them out and get rid of any air holes underneath. I'm moving on to the legs now and I've rolled myself a small sort of sausage of clay and I'm using a palette knife just to cut that to shape and cut it down the middle not quite completely in half just so I can open it up and then wrap it around the leg wires and then I'm going to smooth them into place and close them up around the leg and I'll use that palette knife again to cut them down to size and into shape. So I'll do that on both of the legs make sure that they're sitting in the position I want them to and at the thickness I want them to. Once you've applied the clay to the legs you can always trim it down a bit with a knife. So I've just balled up a ball of foil for the head and put it against my model just for size and now again I'm covering that with my clay. For the head I'm using Super Sculpey Firm. The reason I chose Firm for doing the head is because it holds details that little bit better and I was working this out as I went along to a certain degree so I just wanted to make sure that it would hold any details if my clumsy fingers got in the way. So I've put a stick in the bottom just to make it easier to hold and I'm shaping out now where I want the beak to sit because the beak, well, I've got a lot of reference photos um, of crows when, and ravens when I um, did this and the beak set back a little bit so I wanted to shape in where I wanted that to be and now I'm just creating divots with my ball styluses for where the eyes are going to go. Now when I work on this a little bit longer I will change the positioning of the eyes but this is just for me to begin with 
and so that I can work out where the beak is going to sit. I'm using some black glass beads for the eyes of this model. So now I've got them in position, I can see better as to where the eyes and the beak sit in relation to each other. So I'm using my ball styluses just to add some impressions and divots as to where some of the details will go. And now I'm pushing in the clay in the area where the beak is going to sit. So I say the beak is slightly set back and also I do want it to sit in and be able to be secured to my model as best as possible. So now we're on to making the beak. So I've taken a thick sort of snake or sausage of clay. Um, I've rolled it out and conditioned it and balled it up and I'm shaping it with my fingers in sort of a triangular shape. I'm forming the bottom half of the beak at the moment. So just using my fingers of even pressure on both sides to try and create an even shape and fiddling with it until I'm happy and then testing it out on the head that I'd already made and tweaking it as I need to to make sure that it fits correctly. When I'm happy with that this here is some aluminium mesh it's a very fine mesh I decided I'm going to use that inside the beak to add extra support. I will also support the beak with some cocktail sticks a bit later on but I wanted this mesh to run down the middle of the beak to just give it a little bit of help with the structure and firmness especially as I'm going to be hanging a mask from it later on so I wanted it to be quite strong. Uh, onto the upper beak now which is a little bit thicker than the lower beak. Trying to get the proportions of this beak right was a bit of a nuisance. Um, when it was finished on the actual sculpture before I added the mask it looked absolutely enormous but it needed to because it needed to hold the mask and as soon as the mask was in place it all looked in proportion. So make sure you're paying attention to things like that when you're doing your own sculptures because sometimes um, things need to be slightly over exaggerated to get your point across but as the artist it's up to you to judge that. So I'm now pushing my um, top beak over the bottom beak um, and then I'm just going to cut that down to size. Now I'm happy with the main thickness and shape that it was forming. And again, just positioning it against my head to make sure that it was sat where I wanted it to. Obviously it was a bit big, so I'm just using my palette knife to trim that down just a tad. And again, smoothing out to make sure I maintain that shape that I need. And always make sure that when you're sculpting your, or drawing even, um, that you're um, measuring things up against other parts. I couldn't just make that beak and hope it worked. I had to make sure that I'm measuring it against the head to make sure it's not too big or too small, against the other part of the beak to make sure it's not too big and small. You need to be constantly just checking against its, your model or your picture or any artwork you're doing. Constantly make sure you're checking it against itself to make sure it's going to work. Now, as I said, this beak is going to be slightly too large, that's on purpose, but I also know that I'm going to be adding more details to the head and more clay to the head, so the head is going to get slightly bigger too. So I had that in my mind's eye as well, knowing how I wanted the head to look. So I was using that um, image in my head as to what proportion this beak needed to be to. So just be aware of the few steps ahead of yourself as well as to what you're likely to change in your model, which would alter what you're doing at this moment in time. So I'm just making sure his beak's as straight as I can get it and smooth. And then I'm going to be adding some more clay to bulk out certain areas just to get the right shape. Like in this area here where the um, beak's going to hit the, to meet the head. Just bulking that out slightly by adding more clay. As I've said in past videos, um, don't be afraid to tweak what you've done. Just because you spent ages working on something, doesn't mean that you have to keep it as you've been working on it. You can use a knife or a palette knife to remove clay. You can also add clay if something isn't quite working. Um, you're not going to ruin anything because you haven't finished your work yet. So just keep on working at it, adding pieces. If it doesn't work, take it away until it's looking how you want it to look. The only time you're going to finish, you're going to ruin anything is when you've completely finished a piece and you drop it or something and break it, you know, so... As long as you're still working, the piece isn't finished, so nothing is ruined. 
All I've done now is added another piece of that wire mesh to the inside of the beak. I'm using some um, Super Sculpey clay adhesive. It used to be called Bacon Bond. And just making sure that that will stick the beak halves together once it's baked. And some extra tweaks to that beak. And some clay adhesive to the head as well to make sure that I have a firm and secure connection once it's baked. Before it's baked, I can take it all apart as much as I want, but um, once it's baked, that will be really nice and secure. So now I'm happy with that placement and the size of the beak, I'm just blending it into the head using numerous tools as I see fit um, for the needs and the area and the shape of the area that I'm trying to blend. And then just making sure that the beak is sitting how I want it to sit. And adding more clay to make sure that the shape is right. I do apologise for this being off camera um, a lot. I tried to um, keep it in camera and failed for the most part of this video. So I've edited it as best I can so you can see what I'm doing. For the beak now, I realised that the eyes were actually in the way for what I needed to do. Because I needed to bulk up um, the top of the beak a lot more. So for the time being, I removed the eyes so that I could work on that without worrying about displacing them or um, covering them over or anything. But it's easier to take them off, work on the bit that I needed to work on, and then I'll add them in again a little bit later. So as I say, you've never ruined anything. Um, just because you've worked on a, on a part doesn't mean that you have to keep it. You can readjust as to your needs to what will be a more effective way of working for you. I'm now using my homemade rake tools. It's a guitar string um, and I've crimped it in a small brass tube and I'm using that to smooth out my clay. So I'm just using that so it just knocks back any bumps and lumps and it can also help to blend areas as well. And now I've knocked that back a bit more. I'm just adding in the shape of how the beak and the um, feathers on the head meet with a, uh, it's, an it's, it's a dentist tool, this one, I think it's an explorer tool. So that's just marking out the shapes that I need for where the beak and the head meet. And so where I'm not happy with the shape, just adding more clay and trying to keep it as symmetrical as possible. It doesn't have to be exact because nothing in nature is completely symmetrical, but you know, you need to be somewhere in the ballpark. So again, using that homemade rake tool now just to smooth things out and help blend that extra piece of clay that I've added into what I've already sculpted. I used this method with the rake tool because I didn't want to smoosh anything and it just helps to give you a nice even blend um, when you don't want to be adding pressure. If I use a spoon tool or something like that, I'd be adding sort of divots to my clay and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to blend it in nice and smoothly. So the rake tools were the perfect tool to do that with. Now pushing in with my thumbs, roughly where the eyes are going to go again. Just so that I can see. Again, just for my own reference, a divot with my thumb is easier to remove if it's in the wrong place than messing around by putting the divots in with my styluses. I think with all the messing around now, I'd realised that my beak was a little bit too large. So I'm just shortening that out and trying to maintain the shape that I need off camera again because I messed up. <laughs> but hopefully you can see enough as to what I've done in order to see what I'm doing. As with anything with art, it isn't a race. Um, I had for this video uh, well over 30 hours of um, footage of making this um, and I didn't record the entire process. So half of the um, adding the feathers I hadn't recorded because it was so repetitive. So, um, you know, it, it's a marathon it's not a race and or it's not a sprint I should say marathons are races aren't they 
So it's a it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, so take your time. And if something's going to take you two days to make and it's just a beak, it's going to take you two days. It's just a beak. It doesn't matter as long as the end result is where you want it to be. So don't feel like you have to rush. And if you feel like you are rushing, take some time away from your project. Step back, go and have a cup of tea, go and have a break, go and have a sleep um, if it's later on and then come back to it because you're going to be more refreshed and more willing to spend the time to add the needed details when you're refreshed than if you're sat doing your project for a very long time. So it's always important to take breaks because then, as I say, the detail that you will add will be far more refined than if you're just rushing because you get to a stage where you've had enough, you've been doing it for hours and you're just like, oh, it'll do. And you won't be happy with the end results if you do it that way. So take a break, step away, come back when you're a bit more refreshed and start, not start again, but continue. <laughs> and and I, I guarantee you, you'll be far happier with the results that you, you get if you if you do that. I'd been paying attention to my reference photo, as with always, and I noticed that there were sort of feathers that come onto the side of the bottom half of the beak. So I'm just adding clay to that area because then I can add the texture in with my other tools a little bit later on. So I'm just bulking out the areas there where I knew those feathers needed to be. And now I'm just refining that join between the beak and the feathers of the head that bit more and the um, connection between the bottom and heart, bottom, the top and bottom part of the beak. So these tools are very, very handy. They don't just do one job, these homemade tools. Um, you can make any tool really to meet your needs. Here's another one. This is with a lot finer um, guitar string. So it's much easier to add some smaller details and a bit more refinement to certain areas. Because I noticed when I was looking at my reference photos where the join of the beak is, it's, it's got a slight lip. It's not a completely, um, not a lip as in a human lip, but it, as in a slight, it slightly divots from where the, the join is. So I was just trying to accomplish that. And the best way to do that was with a fine tool. And this one's made with a very fine wire. So it was perfect for the job. So just gently remove some of that clay and then smooth it through. Just refining the shape a bit more now. And now we're adding eyes again. So I've got my ball styluses again. I'm just pushing in the position of those eyes, smoothing that out with my thumb a little bit, making sure it's sat at all angles where I want it to be. And then I'm adding those beads back in. Making sure that they're sat as and where I want them to be as well. constantly going over the details that I want defined because as you're moving your hands around you can soften some details so I'm just making sure that everything that I want defined is as defined as it can be and I'm adding in where the lines around the eyes and everything should be as well with that tool. Now I've got a very thin sort of sausage of clay that I'm just going to attach around the eye in a circle that will make the eye sit more in so like it's more inside the head and also looking at my reference photos um there's quite a sort of pretty pattern of feathers around the eyes so i wanted to create them so i added the clay in which to um, imprint those um feather impressions so i'm just adding that around and i'll blend it in so just gently blend in the very edge
and make sure it's sitting how I want it to. And I'll do that on both the eyes because again we're after some sort of symmetry. I've now added another sausage of clay, very thinly rolled and shaped it around the over the top of the eyes and over the top of the beak. Um, that will form the shape that the feathers are sitting in. And I'm just going to blend in the top side of that piece of clay and leave the other half not quite as blended because that will give me the ridge I need for the feathers. And as you can see, again, using my tool to smooth that out. I've now got a very thin sheet of clay that's rolled out about number four on my pasta machine, I think. And I'm just shaping that where it needs to go on the beak and making a marking as to how far I want that to go. Because again, on the beaks, they have feathers coming onto them. And so I want them to look right. So I'm adding a thin piece of clay there that I can then draw on later. And I'm just marking underneath now where another piece of clay is going to need to be added for a bit of the feathering that goes underneath the beak as well. There we go, that's getting added. And I'm just cutting that to shape with a blade. That's a tissue blade I was using there. And now I'm both blending and adding the feather texture with my Explorer tool. So that dentist tool I was using earlier. I'm just using the blunt side of that and I'm using sort of long flicking motions to add the feather texture in. So take your time with this. If you go too quickly, you will find that you end up with lots of little tiny nubbins of clay that are a nightmare to get rid of. So if you're using the blunt end and you're going slow enough, you'll just get a lovely texture. This works well for fur as well. The texture on the top of the beak was quite a fur-like texture, I noticed. So that's why I used this technique on the feathers around the beak. And also adding some details around the eyes to get that nice effect that they have. Once I'm happy with that, I'm now going to start attaching him to his body. I cut off the wires that I had sticking out of the armature. They weren't going to work. I cut them off and I used a bamboo skewer in their place to, a to attach the head to. So I've put the head where I want it to be and I'm now just blocking in clay to attach the head and to make sure that it marries to the size of the body. So I'm just making sure that everything's bulked out where it needs to be with enough clay because crows and ravens do have quite a small head in comparison to their bodies so I'm just making sure that the neck is blended in the right sort of size and that's why I haven't added detail to the whole head um, because I knew I was going to have to add this bulk in um, first before I added any sort of texture. So I'm now just rolling through the clay with my tools just blending it out and blending it in where it needs to go I'd say to make sure that all the air is out so that it doesn't crack in the oven and also to make sure it blends in nicely with the head as I have it so far. So using all my tools to do that make sure it sits nicely. Now I'm not so worried about how bumpy or lumpy this body is. I need it all to be roughly the right shape. I'm not looking for perfection at the moment because this is just the base layer. I'm getting this all in and once it's all in I'm going to bake it and then all the detail is going to go on top of that. So any obvious divots that are in the um, 
space that I can feel. I'm making sure I fill in with my clay and smooth out, but I'm not so worried about it being extra, extra super smooth or anything like that because the amount of clay that I'm going to be putting over the top of it, I'd just be wasting my time. That's not to say you can't do that. If, that, if you feel better making sure you've got a dead smooth armature and base first, go for it. Um, I find that I don't like to waste my time when I know how much clay is going over the top of it. So um, that's why I wasn't so concerned. So I'm just adding a few more of the little feathers over the top, just using my little rake tool. Um, blending again. I tend to, tend to work a bit all over the place as and when I see things that I need to do. So I'm just making sure it's ready for its first bake that's all I'm doing now you can see I've added some cocktail sticks just to the very base of the tail there as well that's because I want to do some tail feathers separately and I need to be able to attach them to the base now if I'd have forgotten to do them it wouldn't have mattered so much I could have drilled in later after it was baked but why create work for myself so I've just added sort of three holes with cocktail sticks that I'll bake and then remove um, so that I can add tail feathers later I'm just going through and refining the eye details and the feathers around the eye and the head and clearly not watching where I'm putting my fingers and this is why I'm using the firm clay because I'm less likely to smoosh detail that I've put in um, now like that with the firm clay than I would be with a softer school piece. So that's another reason because I'm clumsy and I'm clearly not looking at all where I'm putting my fingers at the moment. So I noticed the feathers on the top were slightly different texture, so I was using a different tool just to get them. And now I'm brushing over clay softener to smooth him all over, ready for his first bake. Now that's it for this video. The next video will be going into the feathers and how I'm adding the detail there. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please leave me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new content that I post. For now though, bye guys.